In the last video, we established that if we consider rectilinear motion, which is just motion along a straight line, then information about the position can be plotted on a graph. Okay, and just to review what that looks like, let's say that we have a uh, graph of position versus time, like this, and maybe my graph specifically will look kind of like that. So the position is increasing with time. Um, what we can think of this meaning is for a particular number line, we have um, zero somewhere on it and the positive x um, direction is in a certain direction and the negative x direction is in the opposite direction. So we can interpret positive and negative positions in this way and directions will all be positive or negative because we only have left and right on this number line. Okay, so if we have a graph of position versus time, we can draw a graph of velocity versus time. And the key piece of information we need for this is that the velocity is equal to dx by dt. Um, and since it's one dimensional, we can get rid of the vector symbols and just say that the velocity is equal to dx dt which just looks like an ordinary derivative. Okay, so what I'll have then for the same motion, velocity versus time like so, well, I just imagine finding the derivative of this straight line graph and we get a positive value everywhere along that motion. Okay, but that's not the only choice. Um, we could have had a um, graph for position versus time that looks like this. Okay, it's the same basic um, idea. We still have a positive slope, but here the slope is smaller. So what that means is that the velocity will be positive, but smaller than it was before. Okay, so essentially we can interpret the slope of a position graph as the velocity. Um, we can also have, for instance, a graph where maybe the position is um, going negative. It's um, decreasing as we go. So only considering the slope of that line, then what we would plot is a velocity that looks something like this. Okay, and um, we should keep in mind that we could have two different um, graphs that both have the same velocity. So let's say that I started um, up here and still move to the left with the same velocity that I just talked about, well, I would get the exact same velocity graph because the shift doesn't uh, matter. When I take the derivative, that constant would go away. So if two objects are moving to the left at the same speed, they have the same velocity graph no matter where they started. Okay, so we can do the same thing um, to go from velocity to acceleration because remember, the acceleration is equal to dv dt where we're considering one dimensional motion. So let me make up some velocity graphs. Okay. Um, and then we'll draw corresponding acceleration graphs. All right, so first let's say that we draw a velocity graph that looks like this. Okay, so velocity starts out at zero, so the object's not moving, but then the velocity becomes more and more positive over time, which means that it's speeding up. Well, if I plot that graph um, by taking the derivative of the velocity, I get the acceleration, and this will look kind of like this. The slope is constant the whole time, so the acceleration is constant the whole time. All right, well, let's consider another case. Let's say that I have a velocity graph that looks like this. All right, so the velocity starts out negative, which means it's moving rapidly to the left, and it gets smaller and smaller as we go, so closer and closer to zero. So it's moving to the left quickly, but it's slowing down as it moves. Well, if I um, take the derivative of that, it's going to look basically like this. Okay, essentially the same. We have two different velocity graphs that each have the same slope, which means that they lead to the same acceleration. Even though this seemed like really different motion, so moving to the right and speeding up seems really different than moving to the left and slowing down, but it turns out that the acceleration is the same in both cases. Okay, what about a negative acceleration? If we start with the acceleration, can we draw the velocity graph from it? Well, kind of, but there is some ambiguity here, right? So all I need to do is draw a line that has a constant negative slope. So I might draw one that looks like this. Okay, so this was an object that was moving to the right because it has a positive velocity, um, and it's slowing down because the velocity is getting closer to zero. Or I could have drawn a graph that looks like this. Okay, same slope, but it started out with basically zero velocity, and now it's speeding up going to the left because the magnitude of the velocity is getting larger. There's also a third case. So what if it crossed this axis? So I could draw one kind of like this. Still has the same slope everywhere. So let's interpret what that velocity graph means. Well, at the beginning, it's moving forward. So it's got a positive velocity. It is slowing down as it goes because the velocity is getting closer to zero. Then it comes to a stop. And then it's moving to the left. And then it's moving faster to the left. Okay, so moving to the right at first, then it slows down and stops and then starts moving to the left. Okay, so a velocity graph that crosses the T axis is a graph that shows an object turned around. Okay, so that's three very different motions that all correspond to the same acceleration. Okay, so um, we have to be really careful going from an acceleration to a velocity or a velocity to a position because taking a derivative loses some information. Um, so you might wonder, can we get any useful information from an acceleration graph? Um, or can we get any useful information about a position from a velocity graph? And the answer is yes, we just have to be a little careful. Okay, so um, to go from acceleration to velocity or from velocity to position, we just have to be a little careful Let's say that we have an acceleration graph as a function of time, and perhaps it looks like this. Well, we've already seen that there are a few different ways that that could look on a velocity graph, but one thing that we can do is using the definition that acceleration is equal to dv by dt, 
we can actually integrate this. So if I integrate both sides of this um, expression here, then I get integral of ADT from T1 to T2 is going to equal delta V from T1 to T2. Okay, this is just the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Um, if you're taking calc two right now and you haven't um, seen this yet, don't worry. I'm not going to test you on this, um, on the math behind it, but I am going to ask you to understand how to interpret this information. So what this tells us is that the integral, which is just the area underneath the curve, gives us the delta V. Okay, so this area between the velocity, or sorry, between the acceleration graph and the time axis is going to give us the change in velocity over this time interval. Okay. Um, and the same is true for the velocity graph giving us information about the position. If you look at the area underneath the velocity graph, that will tell you the change in position. Um, so let me write that down. The area under A of T gives delta V, and the area under V of T gives delta X. Okay. And again, this is just based on the integrals. So again, if you haven't taken Calc 2, don't panic. It's not a big deal. Um, all you need to know is that if you interpret the area under a particular graph, that gives you information about a different quantity with this pattern.